2,000 years ago, something happened that would change the course for mankind forever. God would become a man, come to this earth, and pay the price for man's sin by shedding his innocent blood on the cross. Then he went down into the lowest pits of hell. Then Satan and all of his cohorts thought they had won. But what was thought to be the darkest day for man was about to be his best day yet. God looked down from the banister of heaven and said, that's enough. He declared man righteous, called Jesus his son, and gave him the name above every name. And then Jesus took the keys to death, hell, and the grave, blew the doors off the tomb, set the captives free, and was resurrected back to life. Get on the edge of your seats and get ready for the best series yet. Jesus went to hell. Glory be to God. Welcome to another Bible study. We are continuing on the lines of Jesus Went to Hell. This is a new series that we have started for Easter. It's our Easter series. And we are going to uh, talk about if Jesus went to hell. What part of hell did he go to? Why did he go to hell? What did he do while he was there? How did he come out of hell? Whatever. I mean, there's all kind of questions about what happened. What happened? While he laid in that tomb for three days. That's right. And so, this is, I'm telling y'all, this is this is going to stir some people up right here. It right. does. That's this right. this series will edify you. I know it's some interesting stuff that we're going to talk about here in the beginning that of this series or whatever, of this uh, actual Bible study that may not seem very edifying, but what it'll open up to you for the end of this series, I would say, my gosh, whew, I'm telling you, it's going gonna, it's gonna to light you on fire. Mm. It's, it's awesome. It's some good stuff. You're going to see how much Jesus loves you. And I'm telling you, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take your level of your faith to another level. You're going to see what he went through. Yep. You know, because you know that we got movies and things like that that kind of show us what he went through at the whipping post, what he went through at, on the cross and things like that. But I mean, that's just part of it. Yep. I mean, that's just the physical side. I mean, yep. what we're talking about today is the spiritual side that he went through. Yep. Mm. You know, so <clears throat> we want to encourage you to watch the entire series. Go watch the entire playlist. And uh, last week, or I say last week, the last uh, or the first one, we talked about how Jesus died twice. And if that don't get your curiosity up, <laughs> you, I mean, just, yourself. just the title makes you think. That's hey, right. Just go go watch it. Just go watch it and see what you think. But today we're going to talk about the five compartments of hell or really you would say the five compartments of the underworld. Yep. Because a lot of people just call everything that is under this earth, they call every one of the compartments as in paradise, uh, of the abyss, they call all of it just a, the general word hell. Yeah. So, and that's what we're going to talk about today. There's five different compartments of hell, or what you would really say, like Dave said, the underworld. Mm -hmm. So today, we're going to start out, you want to start out with Tartarus being the first one. The first one of the five is Tartarus. This is an actual place under your feet right now. That's I mean, right. think about that. It's an actual place uh, uh, in the underworld. And uh, I'm going to let Dave open up with some scripture, and we're going to show you exactly what Tartarus is and who's there. So the first scripture I want to share with you is in Second Peter chapter 2, verse 4. And it says, For if God did not spare the angels who sinned, and if you want to know more about that, uh, this right here, you're going to have to watch our series on the Nephilim. Yeah and why God flooded the earth. For if God did not spare the angels who sinned, but cast them down to hell, and that word hell right there, I got a number five beside it, which gives us the Greek uh, definition or the Greek uh, word for yeah. it, and it is Tartarus. So it says, but, but God cast them down to Tartarus. So he didn't actually cast them to hell. Like you said in the beginning, you know, we kind of, call everything hell in the underworld. Yeah. 
but there's five compartments to the underworld, hell being one of them. Yep. But right here, he's talking about a specific place called Tartarus. And it says, and he delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment. And in verse five, it says, and God did not spare the ancient world. He's talking about Noah, but save Noah, one of eight people, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood on the world of the ungodly. So the angels that committed these sexual sins, they they had their own personal place. This word hell, which translate is comes from the word Tartarus, and I'm, that's not even the Greek word. But that's how we that's how we uh, translate it or whatever. It is the only time that it is even used in the New Testament. The word Tartarus, and the only group of uh people or the group of spirits that go to this place Tartarus of the underworld are that are even there right now are these fallen angels that committed the sexual sins from Genesis chapter six. And like Dave said, go watch that series and God spared not these angels that sinned, but he cast them down to Tartarus. All right. So this is one of the compartments of the underworld. Mm -hmm. Now look at first Peter chapter three, verse 18 for Christ also once has suffered for the sins of the just for the and for the unjust that he would bring us to God being put to death in the flesh but quickened by the spirit by which by the spirit he also went and preached unto the spirits that were in prison which sometimes were disobedient when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was was preparing wherein few that was in eight souls were saved by water so he's telling you right here that the spirits that were in prison, that was the fallen angels from Second Peter chapter 2, verse 4. And uh, it says that Jesus, and we're, we're going to get into this later, but what Jesus did while he went to this compartment or whatever, but this compartment called Tartarus, it held, it held these fallen angels that sinned uh, in Genesis chapter 6. Mm-hmm. And these are the angels that... Uh... They um tell you they what. left their first estate. That's um, what I was is that in to, Jude? Ju- that's what I was fixing to read. Well, go ahead Jude. and flip over there, and I'll let you read that. But these are the angels that left their first estate or their first uh, habitation, you could say. Yeah. Um, and they came down, and when you read Genesis chapter six, it says that they. You want to read that? Yeah, I'm in Jude right here. Go ahead. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but they left their own habitation. And what he's talking about is they they left their spiritual bodies and came became something else, whatever, uh, and took on a mortal body or mm, whatever, a human body, a human body. And the angels which kept not their first estate but left their own habitation, he has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto judgment of the great day, even as Sodom and Gomorrah. And what he's talking about is these angels they're going to be in Tartarus until the great white throne judgment, the great day of judgment. That's right. Yep. So that is the first, that is the first of five of the five compartments. Mm -hmm. And the number one, the first one is Tartarus. That's right. All right. So the next one was going to be one that you might be more familiar with. And it is what we call paradise or Abraham's bosom. Yeah. And you can, uh, you can find this. And the story that Jesus told about the rich man and Lazarus in Luke chapter 16. Is that yep. right? In Luke chapter 16. And uh, you'll actually see that this one compartment has another compartment right beside it. But it's, there's a gulf that separates these two compartments. Mm-hmm. Th- this all together is a place called Sheol. And half of this compartment is called, or I say half, one part of this compartment is called is called paradise, and we're going to see what the other part is called right here in this story. You want to read it? Yeah. So what, this is going to require about 11 or 12 scriptures right here. So it says, There was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. See, a lot of people want to uh, refer to this as a parable. Yeah. But I it really... certain. I believe, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Uh, I really believe this is something that Jesus, that actually happened that Jesus is referring to. Yeah. He says there was a certain rich man, not just there was a rich man that went into a far country or something like that. He says there was a certain rich man, 
But there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, full of sores, who was laid at his gate, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. So it was that the beggar died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. And that's what we call paradise today. That's right. So this, yeah, this is paradise. Um, maybe we need to talk about uh, what paradise is right yeah. now. Yeah, we can. So paradise, Abraham's bosom is going to be, it is the place where the righteous, the Old Testament saints that were righteous, that died as believers, they went. Everybody from Abel to Christ until yeah. the death, burial, and resurrection. Mm -hmm. Or pro hopefully Adam. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was thinking for, uh, Abel was the first one to die. Oh, whatever. yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. I got you. But uh, all the righteous that were waiting on the, their Messiah to come, they were held captive in this place called Abraham's bosom or Sheol, however you want, or paradise, whatever you want to call it. They were held captive in, in this place until the coming Messiah would come and set them free and take them to heaven. That's what, yep. We'll we'll probably get into that into a later uh, a later teaching in this series right here, but they were re referred to as the captives, and they were the ones that Satan had held captive against their will yeah. until the coming Messiah. So it says they were carried to Abraham's bosom, or you could say um, paradise. The rich man also died and was buried, being in torments. In Hades. All right, listen to this. All right, so Hades is the third compartment. We could go ahead and say that. Yep. So, and it's going to be the third compartment, or not just Hades. It'd be what what we would say as hell. That's right. And it's going to be Hades. It's a place of torment. All right. So, so being in torments in hell or Hades, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham. All right. So he's over here in torment. In Hades, and you got the other man over here in Abraham's bosom, and it says he lifted up his eyes and he could see Abraham. Mm. So he could see from the place of torment over into a place where the righteous were held the against righteous, their right. will, but there was no torment there. That's right. <clears throat> there was there was uh, there was absolutely no torment on, in Abraham's bosom because they were just there waiting on the Christ That's to right. set them free. Then he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. Mm. So that will show you right there that there are flames and there is torment on one side of hell, or one side of Hades. Yeah. But, you know, this other side, when Jesus set the captives free, that place is empty now. There's yeah. nobody there anymore. Exactly. And that's what Ephesians chapter four says that when when he descended or he that ascended first descended, he descended into the lower parts of the earth. At the death, burial, and resurrection, Jesus descended into the lower parts of the earth. And on his way out on that third day, he came by and set the captives free and led captivity captive. Everybody that was held captive against their will, the righteous saints, they that's right. They came out with them. That's Ephesians chapter 4, I believe 7 through 11 or 8 through 11. Something like that. It's Ephesians 4, I know. All right. But Abraham said, Son, remember in your lifetime that you received your good things and likewise Lazarus, evil things. But now he is comforted. So he, he's over here in Abraham's bosom. He's in paradise. He's being comforted right mm -hmm. now. One man, one side is torment. One side is comfort. And you are tormented. And besides this, it says, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed so that those who want to pass from here to you cannot, nor those from here, from from there to us. So he says they could see each other. There's two different sides right here, but there's something in between the two that prevents one from coming over here. And one from going over there, and I don't know why anybody would want to go from the comfort <laughs> side over to the torment side. I never realized it said that said that that or whatever. Yeah. And he said, "I beg you, therefore, Father, that you would send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers that they he may testify to them, lest they also come to this place of torment." Abraham said to him, "They have Moses and the prophets; let them hear." 
And he said, no, Father Abraham, but if one goes up from the dead, they will repent. But he said to them, if they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they per- be persuaded, though one rises from the dead. Mm. So first, we seen that we seen a place where the fallen angels that committed the sexual sins they went to a place called Tartarus, mm-hmm. and now just in Luke chapter sixteen, we seen another place that was uh, a, a place called Sheol, where, where it contains paradise or mm-hmm. Abraham's bosom, and it contains a place of torment called Hades or hell. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's three compartments that we've had already. We have a place where the angels go. We have a place where the righteous went. Everybody from Abel to Jesus that died, the righteous that died, waited on the Christ. They went waiting and they were there in comfort. Mm -hmm. It was not a place of torment. And then the third one was Hades or hell, which was a place of torment where the unrighteous go and they wait until... They they actually will be resurrected at the great white throne. They'll receive their immortal bodies and they'll be they'll be uh they'll be resurrected or whatever and brought back to their immortal bodies or brought back or given a immortal body, I guess you could say, and they'll end up being thrown in a totally different place at the great white throne judgment. I thought you was finna give away number five. Nah, <laughs> trying not to. <clears throat> Glory to God. I need but, a shot collar on him sometimes. But remember <laughs> that second place. The Abraham's bosom, that place is empty now. Mm-hmm. The righteous right. uh, it, uh, go straight to heaven now. When somebody dies, hey, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. That's right. So, all right. What else so, we got? All right. So now we're going to talk about the fourth compartment of the underworld. And this place is called um, the abyss. We the see bottomless that, pit. Or the bottomless pit. We see these in, in Scripture. And uh, so the first place we're going to go is uh, Luke chapter uh, 8. And let's read um, verse 26. We're going to start. And this is a familiar passage right here. This is uh, where Jesus cast the legion of demons out of the man. And says, Then they sailed to the country of the Gadarenes, which is opposite Galilee. And when he stepped out onto the land, there met him a certain man, from a certain city who had demons for a long time. And he wore no clothes, nor did he live in a house, but in the tombs. When Jesus saw him, when he saw Jesus, he cried out, fell down before him with a loud voice, and said, What have I to do with you, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man, for he had often seized him, and he was kept under guard, bound with chains and shackles. And he broke the bonds and was driven by the demons into the wilderness. Jesus asked him, saying, What is your name? And he said, My name is Legion. Many demons had entered him. And they begged him. This is it right here. And they begged him the demons that, that he would not command them to go out into the abyss. So we can see a fourth compartment, and we're going to see in just a second that this abyss is another place or another compartment of the underworld, and that there are this is a place for demons, for mm-hmm. demons to dwell. Mm-hmm. That's right. Mm. Glory to God. Now, you want me to get Revelation? Yeah. All right, now look at Revelation chapter 9. And this is actually during the seven years of tribulation when the, when the uh, trumpets and seals and all these things are taking place. Listen to this. This is Revelation chapter 9, verse 1. And the fifth angel sound, uh, sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto earth, and unto this, to this star uh, to him was given a key to the bottomless pit. And that bottomless pit right there is is referring to the abyss, the abyss or the bottomless pit. This is all the same place. And he opened the bottomless pit and there arose out of the smoke of the pit as uh, as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locust upon the earth. And unto them were given power as the scorpions of, of the earth have power. All right. Uh, right there where he's talking about locust, that is not talking about natural locust. This is actually talking about demons. And we're going to get into that in just a second. 
And it was commanded to these locusts that they should not hurt the grass or the earth or any green thing, or, uh, neither any tree or any of the men that have the seal of God on their foreheads. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months, and their torment uh, was as the torment of a scorpion when he strikes a man. And in those days shall men seek death, and they shall not find it, and they shall desire to die, and the death shall flee from them. And the shape of these locusts, or these demons, were like unto horses prepared unto battle. And of, on their heads were as crowns like gold, and their faces were, uh, were as the faces of men. And they had hair as the hair of women, they had teeth as the teeth of lions, they had on breastplates as it were breastplates of iron. And the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running into the battle. And they had tails like the scorpions, and there were there uh, there were stings in their tails, and their their power was to hurt men for five months. Mm -hmm. And uh, this ain't an eschatology teaching, end times teaching, or anything. But he's talking about the men that had received the mark or whatever. Uh, and and they verse eleven, and they the locust, these demons. They had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit or the angel that came out of the bottomless pit. It's actually what it's saying. So we see that there that there was another angel. And I don't know why this angel, what this angel did to get to be thrown into this bottomless pit. But they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue was Abaddon. But in the Greek tongue, his name was Apollyon. So, and what that refers to as the destroyer, or de uh, the one that causes destruction. So there was an angel in the bottomless pit that was king over demons. And during the seven years of tribulation, a, a God sends an angel to come and unlock the key to, to release these demons and angel upon the earth. He says, don't kill anybody or don't touch any or harm any any man that has any has the mark of God on his forehead. Don't hurt the green grass. Don't hurt the trees and all these types of things. But this is the fourth compartment right here. And it's known as the abyss. And this this is not Tartarus where the fallen angels are. This is a totally separate compartment. Well, it's just like um, when we read a while ago in, in Luke 8, they, at, they beg Jesus, please don't cast us into the abyss. Yeah. So that means... That they they could have been cast into the abyss. Yeah, and that, like you said, demon spirits or whatever, or that's what's going to come out of whatever with the, all these powers during the great tribulation, and there is a fallen angel in there that's going to come out with them, and he's going to have power over him. He's going to be their king. Yep. So, uh, to God, in in the abyss right here in the fourth compartment, we see that there is demon spirits in there, and we see that there is a fallen angel. At least in there. one fallen angel. At least one. So we're going to go over here now. And two, all right. So when you was reading while ago, um, back up here in verse uh, in verse one, and it talks about how the key was given to that angel, the fifth angel or whatever, to the bottomless pit. I my. Greek where I hear, you know, it's got a number four beside it. When you go down here and read it, it says shaft of the abyss. So you, you just figure, you know, hmm. that abyss has got a shaft coming up, you know, a tunnel coming up or whatever. Huh. That's so pretty the, cool there. So there, he's got a key that unlocks this, this pit tunnel. right here. Yeah. And it's, it is leading down into the, the bottomless pit or the abyss right here. All right, so we come over here to chapter twenty of Revelation. And let's see. So this is uh this is after the great tribulation is over with, right here, when the uh, the beginning of the millennial reign starts. He says in verse one, then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit. Yeah. So we just seen the fifth angel had the key to the bottomless pit. Now here comes the angel back down with the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. Yeah. This is at the second coming right here. This is at the second coming of Jesus Christ when he comes down and sets his feet back on this earth. Yep. Back on Mount Olive. <clears throat> he laid hold of the dragon, that serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan. All right. So you just think about this right here. 
a lot of people, you, you see pictures and stuff like this with Jesus fighting the devil, arm wrestling the devil and stuff like that. I, Jesus don't have to come do anything right here. One angel comes down with a chain in his mm. hand and it says he takes hold of the devil. So can you imagine what Jesus would do if he got a hold to him? Good gosh. <laughs> it's no competition. Jesus said in Matthew 28, all authority in heaven and on earth, mm. all power in heaven and on earth has been given unto me. That's right. So he says, he laid hold of the dragon, the serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. And he cast him into the abyss or to, into the bottomless pit. And he shut him up and set a seal on him so that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years were finished. So at the second coming, you, 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 you're you going to have, all right, first of all, you're going to have the rapture. You're going to have seven years of tribulation. You're going to have the second coming of Jesus when he sets his foot back on the Mount of Olives. And then that's when this takes place. Uh, the key, a key is given to this angel again. Mm -hmm. And then he takes Satan, throws him in the bottomless pit, locks him up. And then now the millennium has started. The thousand year reign of Christ on this earth has started. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's go over to verse seven right now. And same chapter. It says, now when the thousand years has expired, Satan will be released from his prison. Talking about the bottomless pit. Yep. And he will go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to the battle, who is at the sand, who is as the sand of the sea. Do we need to read any further? Uh yeah, you can. Nine through ten, probably. Okay. Then they went up on the breadth of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints and the beloved city and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. The devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire. And we're going to get to that one in just a minute. Cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are, and they will be tormented day and night forever. You know, so we just covered the first four and this right here opens up to the fifth compartment or the fifth, uh, yeah, I guess you say compartment of the underworld right yep. here, which would be the lake of fire. Yep. And this is known as the, the last or the final hell, the eternal fire, the everlasting fire. Uh, Nobody goes to the lake of fire until. The except end. for the false prophet or whatever, the beat well, the beast, which is, I don't believe is actually a person or whatever. Yeah. But uh, it says that, Verse 10, and the devil that deceived them, this is this is at the great white throne judgment, right before the great white throne, if I'm not mistaken. The devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are, and they and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Mm -hmm. You want to keep reading? Yeah. Then I saw a great white throne. All right, so now we're talking about the great white throne judgment. This is at the end of the millennial reign. This is the wrap up. Yep. This is the this is the end right here. Then I saw a great white throne and him who sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was also found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. And the books were open. And another book was open, which was the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. The sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and Hades, which are hell, which we read while ago with the rich man and Lazarus. Which was the third compartment that we talked about. Death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged, each one according to their works. Then death and hell, or death and Hades, were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death, and anyone that did not have their their name written into in the Lamb's book of life was also cast into the lake of fire. So we we see we have already seen we seen Tartarus where the fallen angels went mm -hmm. the the angels from Genesis chapter six that committed the sexual sins. We seen a place called paradise or Abraham's bosom. This was a place in Sheol. This was the second compartment where the righteous that died waiting on Christ, everybody from Abel to Christ, where they went. All right. Then you've got the third place called hell, 
which were where all the righteous, uh, unrighteous, excuse me, where all the unrighteous go when they die, waiting on this, what we just read in, in uh, chapter 20 of Revelation right here. They're waiting on the great white throne judgment to be thrown into the lake of fire. All right, then we have the fourth one, which is the abyss or the bottomless pit, where there's an angel and demons, the locust or whatever. They're, they're there waiting, and they're going to be turned loose during the seven years of tribulation to have destruction on this earth and to harm men that take the mark upon the forehead or their hand or wherever. And then you've got the fifth one that we've already that we just mentioned, or whatever, which is the lake of fire, mm -hmm. and that's that is the eternal fire. That's the last hell, and hell, death, and hell will be thrown into the lake of fire. Mm -hmm. Good gosh. And Satan, at the second coming, he's thrown into the bottomless pit. And then at the end of the thousand year reign, he's brought out of the bottomless pit and thrown into the lake of fire. Five compartments right there. That's five compartments of the underworld. And I'm telling you, we had to break this down before we, we could go any further and show you where Jesus went when yeah. he went into the underworld. Yeah, like we're saying, this this right here may not have been been edifying. It probably was more interesting than it was anything. Informational. Yep, but what this will do for the rest of this series, you're going to start seeing some stuff. That's you're right. going to see how much Jesus loves you, what his death, burial, and resurrection mean, means for you. And I'm telling you, like I said, this is going to take your faith to another level when you when you see everything that Jesus bought and paid for and why he did it. Whew. I'm right. telling y'all, I'm fired up. You do not want to miss the next part of this series. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And Jesus is Lord. And he is coming soon.